Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Scheme, and for those of you new to my channel, this is my BMW 335i. Now, when I was searching for my E92, there's pretty much two choices that you can make. You can get one with an N55, or you can get one with an N54. I decided to go with the N55, and I wanted to tell you guys why, in case you guys were thinking about buying one. All right, so let's start out with the basics of both engines. They're both pretty similar. They're both an inline six, they're both three liters, and they're both turbocharged. Now the N54 came out in the earlier years between 2007 to about 2010. I have a 2013, so I have an N55 in mind, which was kind of the point of the video, why I chose an N55 over an N54, so obviously I do have one. Now when you look underneath here, it's pretty easy to tell the difference when you pop the hood. You can see the intake right here on an N55. It goes over the back of the valve cover, where an N54, this little decorative cover, will go all the way back and you'll just see the airbox there. So in case you guys pop the hood and you're wondering which one's there, that's a pretty simple way to tell. Now, the main reason that I decided to go with an N55 over an N54 is reliability. The N54 is not as reliable as the M55. All engines have their problems. The M55 has less problems and they fixed a couple of the things that went wrong with that when they went to the M55. All right, now the biggest difference between the two engines is that on an N54, it's a twin turbo inline six, and on the N55, it's a single turbo, which is a twin scroll single turbo. Now, with the, turbo, uh, the twin turbos on the N54, they had a problem with what's called a wastegate rattle, where the wastegates, they, make, they don't quite seal quite right, and they make a whole bunch of noise, and it sounds really bad, and that's not something I really wanted to deal with. The N55 doesn't really have that problem, so, I don't have to worry about it. So that was probably the biggest reason that I went with an M55 was that I didn't want to have to deal with fixing the turbos. If you have, plus if you have twice as many turbos, that's twice as many things to go wrong, which can get really expensive. Now, anyway, on the N54, a lot of people will actually switch out the, the twin turbos and put a single turbo on there anyway, once they start making a little bit more power. So both the N54 and the N55 both have direct injection. Now what that means is that it squirts the fuel directly into the cylinder when it needs the fuel to be there so that it can light them off. Now, the problem with this is that the cylinder pressure is really high when it comes up on the compression stroke, so you need to have really high fuel pressure to offset the pressure that's in the cylinder. Now to do that, they have what's called a high pressure fuel pump in there. And on the N54, there was a bit of a problem with having them not fail. And if you don't have fuel pressure, your engine doesn't run. And that's not something I wanted to deal with because I don't want to be stranded out on the road. Now, along with the high pressure fuel pump problem, the N54 had a problem with fuel injectors. Uh, they would have somewhere where they would leak or they would just stop working. And being a direct injected engine, the fuel injectors are a lot more expensive than the old fuel injectors on regular port injections because they have to withstand all of the pressure from the high pressure fuel pump. You know, before it was, you'd have to handle, you know, 50 to 100 PSI at most on a port injection. Well, on a direct injection, they have to handle thousands of PSI. So they have to build them a little bit higher quality and a little bit thicker, which costs a lot more money. So when you're having to change six injectors, that gets a bit expensive every time that you have to do it. So with uh, those few problems, it's not to say that the N55 is a problemless engine. Every engine you're gonna get, you're gonna have some kind of issue that you're gonna have to deal with. It's just one of those that you're just gonna have to figure out what you can live with, what you can't. You know, it depends on what your budget is and how often it really breaks. Now on the N55, they still have a couple of the problems that the N54 does. Um, this is your oil filter housing, and there's always the gaskets fail and that leaks. Uh, there's valve cover leaks, and there's also oil pan gasket leaks, which that one gets a little bit more expensive. Now, nobody wants to deal with any of those, but pretty much most engines out there will leak oil eventually, but these do have a little bit of a problem with those leaking a little bit more than everything else does. Uh, right now, mine doesn't leak at all which is kind of a good thing, but I know I will have to deal with it one of these days. So another big issue that both of them have is they have a plastic water pump. Now, being that it's a water pump, it's going to be hot all the time because of the hot coolant going through there and the plastic breaks down over time. So they both have a problem with failing and it's just going to be something that you're going to have to replace every once in a while, no matter which engine you get. It's probably going to become actually a maintenance item that you should change before it breaks because you don't want to overheat and be stuck on the side of the road. All right, so the last real issue that both of these engines have, well, actually most BMW engines have, is they have a system called Vanos, which in layman's term is variable valve timing, and they use a fancy word for that, an acronym. I don't remember exactly what it stands for. I should probably look it up. But they have a problem with their solenoids failing, and that's a common problem that you're gonna need to get fixed every once in a while. 
And honestly, most of the engines I've ever worked on, they have a problem with their variable valve timing, solenoids failing every once in a while. So it's just something you're gonna have to look out for and it's a common problem that they're gonna have. So that's pretty much the difference of why I chose an M55 over an N54. Now I wanted to show you guys, beeped at me. Now I wanna show you guys the reasoning that I wanted to go with this model year over the earlier model years. It's locked, let me grab the key. So now looking at the interior of the car, there was one thing that really stood out between the older ones and the new ones is on the older ones, all of the trim on the inside from here and down here, that was wood paneling and I didn't really like it. It's not something I really wanted to live with. It wouldn't have been too hard to take them all off and wrap them up, but it's not something I really wanted to deal with. And I like the look of this one, like it looks nice. You know, nice aluminum pieces. You could also buy the aluminum pieces for the other one as well. But most of them that I looked at all had wood paneling and I just, I didn't like it. Now, for the real thing that I really bought this car for is the flappy paddles. The old cars, they all had flappy paddles, but this one's set up correctly. On the old ones, it was if you wanted to shift up, no matter which side you pulled on, that was up on both sides. And then if you wanted to go down, there was like a little lever that stuck out right here that you would push and that would shift you down, which is incorrect for the rest of the world. And I don't know why they did it that way. Um, this one, you know, shift up is right, shift down is the left one. I don't know why they decided to do something different. I'm not an engineer, but I didn't like it. So I went with this one. So that's my reasoning. I went with the N55 over the N54 and why I bought a newer one over one of the older ones. But if you guys like what you saw, smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. So that way the next time I post a video, YouTube will let you know that I did and you guys can watch it. So I will also leave my Instagram link down below. I do post there from time to time. Thank you guys. I'll see you next video. Into the cylinder one. Moose. Moose is being really needy right now. Look at him. Look at the moose. Oh yeah. Somebody needs their belly rub, isn't it? You always want your belly rub.